The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Leonard Weaver, front and center please, sir. Leonard led Carson Newman to the second round of the NCAA playoffs on three occasions and helped guide the Eagles. Somebody else got up in his place. He helped guide the Eagles to a trio of South Atlantic Conference regular season titles before pursuing a five-year NFL career that led to a pair of all-pro selections. He began his career at Carson Newman as a linebacker, had a decent year that first year in 2001, but the next year he was moved to tight end, and in 2000... Is that better? Are we on? Is that good? Turn down just a little, I guess. Leonard transitioned really well to that tight end position, so much so that he led Carson Newman to a 9-3 and three record by the time he got out. And also by the time he left, he was in the second round of the Division II playoffs with 27 total catches for 571 total yards. He was signed by the Seahawks as an undrafted free agent in 2005. He was then signed on as an unrestricted free agent in 2008, signed then with the Philadelphia Eagles. Leonard Weaver received his award tonight from Alan Morgan, the athletic director at Carson Newman. And Leonard, you are to the chair, sir. All right, so we're gonna start off on a bit of a somber note, and I'm sorry to do that to you. Uh, this year's Hall of Fame class was named just a day or two prior to Ken Sparks passing away. Mm -hmm. What did Coach mean to you? Um, Coach Ken Sparks was uh, he was uh, an inspirer. Uh, he inspired us, inspired me. Um, he taught us a lot about character and what it meant to be a man, a man of faith and a, a man of your word. And so um, he meant quite a bit um, to to myself and to the team and. Uh, and some of those young men out there that are sitting out there, that young man, Miss Coach Turner as well, um, he meant a lot. When you think about Carson Newman, uh, awesome football institution, how did you get there? Why did you choose them or why did they choose you? Uh, I don't think Carson Newman chose me. Um, I don't think I was on their list like that. Uh, there was a guy by the name of Mike Davis who went to Palm Bay High who was recruiting, but um, I never had heard of Carson Newman. I never heard of the uh, heels, never heard of the cows, the manure smell, never heard anything. Uh, so, so getting there was kind of a, you know, a unique deal, but um, it was by the way of Mike Davis, who was a former athlete there. He was recruiting in the South region and, uh, and basically offered me an opportunity. I had other opportunities to take, but they weren't really serious. And uh, Carson Newman, uh, I think it was Bill, Coach Bill, uh, who brought me in and told me I was gonna play linebacker and from there, you know, things kind of went uphill. Take us through that progression because they said you're going to come in and play linebacker. Mm -hmm. And then after your first season, there was a need at tight end. Mm. They brought you into an office. You were in a locker room somewhere. And they said, all right, here's what's going to happen. How did you react to that? Wow. Um, well, the man who actually made that statement is sitting in the audience right now. His name is Coach Turner right there, uh, the red man. Um, but anyway, the way it happened, <laughs> we were actually in, a, in, in training camp. And uh, I think I jumped up and made an interception, and it might have turned his head a little bit. And uh, from there, they kind of let me play linebacker. But then uh, going into the spring, uh, he brought me to his office and said, hey, look, this is the deal. Uh, you need to pick up 50 pounds. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I'm 225. That means about 40 pounds. I'm going to have to get real fat. Um, he didn't give me the story about eating no biscuits or going to eat no extra food. He just told me I need to pick up weight. And from there, it was kind of just like, hey, I was motivated, ready to work, and then I came out prepared and ready to do what he asked me to do. It turned some heads. Uh, obviously, at the next level, there's a percentage that Dabo Sweeney said years ago that only 1.6 of all of college football's athletes mm actually make it to the next level. You think about all the programs, D1 right. through even JUCO. 1.6 is a heck of a number to get over. Right. And to be able to get over that hump undrafted from the D2 ranks, you're pretty special, yes? Uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't, sometimes I don't know how to answer that. I mean, you kind of put me out there a little bit. I didn't want to say, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but that's how I feel inside. Um, but I won't be, I'll be politically correct and, and you know, be very humble. No, uh, I do think it's a very extraordinary uh, statistic that um, is tough to come by. But, uh, 
you know, by the grace of God and, and the doors opening and having a coach like Coach Turner and Coach Sparks, those guys supporting me, and then my mom and family there, my father and them, uh, you know, having that support um, really helped me push. It, it created a drive. Uh, for me because they were tell me I mean they come through you too small or you know because I play tight end I mean you, John, well, John is what six what are you six five seven <laughs> six five six three oh you look six seven I want to say we played against each other matter of fact I think we played against each other I mean you're looking at a young man like that and then you're looking at you know here and then you come to the tight end and you're like who is this little guy um, I kind of got shot down quite a bit but I, I knew from you know, my childhood and how I was raised, you were never, ever taught to ever give up. You were never taught to stop. Even when people tell you no, you keep pushing. And that's the attitude that I carried over even into the NFL ranks was like, you never, I'm not going to stop until I am the guy. And the attitude uh, paid off. Take us behind the curtain a little bit. What is life in the NFL really like? Which side? That's a good question. <laughs> How about whichever side you are most comfortable in answering uh, with a camera rolling to yes. our left? I don't care. I speak my mind. No, um, I would say the business side of it, which a lot of people oftentimes don't get a chance to see. Um, there is a, a business side of it, just like to everything. Uh, it's, it can be pretty rough. It can be tough. Um, but the, the, the time where you have to make a sacrifice for your family. Uh, I can remember uh, tearing both of my AC joints and them, you know, sticking needles in my arm and I'm having to go play. I can remember, you know, breaking my ankle and I'm like, hey, we're going to make it right. You know, take the medicine, go and play. Those t kind of decisions, business decisions that, they, that have to be made are the tough part. But the great part about the NFL is the brotherhood, the family side of it, that you don't necessarily get to see a lot of. You can see the celebrations individually sometimes, maybe even a team. But inside that locker room, there is a, there is a brotherhood that, that is amongst each one of us that when we come together and we have strived through the good times and the bad times, there is a certain aura that we all carry. And that's probably one of the greatest things that the NFL brings uh, to the game is the fact that that brotherhood, that fraternity, that inside fraternity will never be forgotten. A lot of people do look at their college years as being the ones that really created that cornerstone for the rest of their lives. When you think back of your day in Jeff City, uh, what are the one or two lessons that really stand out that as you're sitting here, truly do, not just lip service, right. that truly do carry you to this day for what you learned in college? Um, this formula that I learned, hard work, dedication and sacrifice equals success. Um, those words were constantly preached um, throughout the whole coaching staff. Um, you know, who you are as a man. You know, I learned a lot on that campus on how to become a young man, you know, what it meant to be a young man from the coaching staff. From my peers and students that I went to school with, it was more so, you know, finding out who I am as a young man, you know, uh, creating relationships and developing friendships that you would have for the rest of your life and understanding that, you know, life is not just about you. You know, life is about, you know, the community and the, and, and the friendships and the bonds that you create from that. So I learned a whole lot. So what projects are you working on these days? Uh, currently, um, really uh, just uh, working with the city. I'm, in, uh, I'm based out of uh, Fort Lauderdale right now and uh, working with the city on a few de deals uh, as far as producing and, uh, you know, um, doing some things in production, which is music. And then I'm also a real estate agent and an investor as well. So just got a few things going on. R&B seems to be your passion, if I read it correctly. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I love it. I, can, I, I guess I can sing a little bit. It depends on what you want me to sing. Is it like, Liter you know, the do one you part. want me to be like, you know, like sexy with it? Or do you want me to like be real, like, you know, like reserved Billie Holiday, you know, uh, something like that? I'm like, Aubrey, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Uh, Leonard is the one person I did catch up with pregame, as it were. Um, can you belt out a couple of notes of something and you pick the style? My dad is telling me not to. It almost makes me want to tell him to come up here. Now, you want to know who really can sing. That guy can sing. I, and then my mom. See, that's my mom right there. Raise your hand, mom. That's my mom and then my pops. But I will belt out. You want to sing some pop? You really do. Inside, you're saying yes. Yes. Okay. I'll just, I'll build out a little something. Only for you. Boom. There it is. That's really good. Leonard Weaver, everybody.